Hey guys, I'm back, and I have a very exciting development in the in what in what regards the advent of void anyway. And I talked about but I talked about this earlier uh, already that I wanted to do make make a little series about the advent of void. And uh, kind of by accident, I found one of the greatest application launchers that you can have. And in fact, this application launcher, which is called Xlaunch, is essentially everything that you have on a D menu and or, or you can maybe talk about Rofi. So it's the equivalent of those two, except that it uh, has one big, uh, big uh, kind of feature in that it, it is graphical. So if I press, for example, the key that opens up my application launcher, notice again that it's completely graphical. So I get icons to everything and I can use it just like I would use the menu. So for example, I can type something V maybe and start searching for a virtual box. Notice that if I press a part of the, um, of the word, it already kind of uh, filters it down to the, to the most important uh, entries. So notice that I have again, the icon for virtual box. I can also cho uh, choose it with the mouse, but usually you, you can also type stuff. And this is something that this is a feature that I always wanted anyway. And uh, when I use the like um, more normal distributions, graphical ones, for example, uh, Ubuntu or Linux Mint, you always had this kind of a feature where you had a, either a, a search box or you or you could or you could uh, ma uh, configure, let's say, a magic. I think you call it magic corner, special corner or something that you hover your mouse over and is open. This is a feature on the Mac also, and I really like it. Now, I don't really do it with the mouse anymore because I barely use the mouse, but uh, it's very useful to have this accessible from one screen. And uh, once again, in my opinion, it looks nicer and the features are the same. So if you want to look at the features, uh, here is kind of the official web website, I suppose. So it kind of has a guide already and you can customize it again. You can change, for example, the um, you can change the uh, kind of wallpaper, the background that you apply to the bottom, and it's just an option on your kind of configuration file. You can even choose to use your kind of your desktop background. So in my case, again, this has been the fine with nitrogen, the little picture on the bottom. And there, are, it's very customizable. You can use it not only in order to run applications, but you can also feed it uh, options, for example, and it's going to work just like the menu. So you could make a, theoretically make a, a, mean, a menu such as this one very simply because it has the option where you click on one of the options and then it prints that option to standard out, which means that you can use it on a script. So what? Uh, so it can be not only, again, a great application to chooser, but also a very nice script launcher. And there, there's a lot of, again, documentation regarding this. So if you want to read through it, again, I'll put the link in the description. And uh, for configuration, so the, uh, whenever you install it, in order to install it, I'm, I'm on Void Linux. Uh, it may be different. It may be different for other Linux distributions. But you're going to use something like this. So XPPS install xlaunch. There are not a lot of dependencies, so you can't really say that this is bloat because there are like two uh, dependencies, and these are dependencies that. If you have a graphical desktop environment installed, you most likely already have them installed. So it's a really lightweight program and it doesn't have that much in terms of what you would call bloat, uh, but still I do prefer it. And my opinion, again, on the whole bloat matter is that the computer, uh, computers in general, again, operating systems, they're built in order to be useful to humans and not the other way around. So we as humans don't, don't necessarily need to make the job easier on the computer. And we're not really limited as we were in the early 80s, maybe in the 90s with regards to compute. So really, again, uh, if, you, if it has more features, I'm going to go with uh, Xlaunch. And to look at the features, so there is this guide once again. And this is kind of the manual page. If you if you type Xlaunch, uh, Xlaunch help on the command line, notice that you get again the same options. And you can, you can change pretty much anything about it. So you can set it to, for, to, for example, uh, read a specific input. So this is where you would, uh, for example, cho uh, set the inputs to your menu, for example, give choices such as what you see here when you when you make a kind of restart, logout, shutdown menu. So you can feed the options through here and then you can also specify the icons that they have. So uh, whenever you install it, it's going to generate kind of an entries file and you can usually find it under etc xlaunch entries. So this kind of contains all the stuff that's installed on your computer. It links to the icons that they use. 
And once that is done, again, once you point it, in this case, this is the entries that you would give it if you were, for example, using it as an application launcher. So notice that when I press the button again, I have all the items that were on that list and I have the kind of the icons and the buttons. And I can do it both ways. I can choose them either by hovering over and clicking. It's going to open up Emacs. But uh, I can also, again, click and, uh, uh, and type stuff on it and open it automatically. So this is, very, uh, this is one of the very useful features, I would say. And uh, what else can I say? So for configuration, it's very simple. You could make a configuration file with, uh, inside your .config xlunch. You're not forced to put it there. You can just, uh, when you run the command, also give it a dash dash config option, and this will make it so you use the configuration file on the path that you specify. So here you would put a path something. And if I run it like this, notice that this is my the setup that I did. You can change the number of uh, rows, for example. I can make it so that it has five rows. Notice that I have five. I can also change the number of columns, maybe. In fact, I think I could go with more columns, so four, for example. And all the options on the command line, they can also be applied uh, on the configuration file. So if I go to my configuration file, again, the number that I would specify with a dash dash rows is five, and the number that I would specify with a dash dash columns is three, for example. So if I want to change the number of columns from here, I just change the columns from five, from three to five again. And uh, once that is done, I should be able to press the button and notice it that again, it changed, it changed accordingly. So this is one very interesting thing about it. And uh, there are several ways to use it again. If you run i3, there is also this option. Notice that this is running on i3. And what happens is that even if you don't have a desktop environment installed, you can give it the dash D flag, the dash small D flag, which is the desktop mode. And what it's going to do is going to kind of, uh, instead of uh, using your your composition manager, not your composition manager, but your desktop manager, because you don't have a, because obviously i3 is just a window manager, so it does not have that. What it does is it simply prints kind of your stuff to the bottom of the, of the screen where you're at. And I can even show this. I think that it works if I do it like this. Notice that again, this is kind of ugly and this is what it would look like if I used, if I didn't have kind of a desktop environment running on one. If you're running it on i3, pure i3, without any kind of any kind of a window, uh, any kind of desktop manager, then this could be your pick. So this is very compatible with uh, all types of, uh, again, all types of desktop manager and also all types of uh, window manager. So if you're using i3, etc. And doc documentation is relatively good. So notice that you can change, for example, the icon sizes. You can also, uh, on your entries file, which is, I don't know if there is a, if there is an example, but uh, if you want to make custom entries for your X launch, and this could be part of a kind of a script, you can also make an entries. And then whatever you write after this has got to follow a kind of a default. So it, it has to be f uh, the name of the application, which is going to appear kind of on your, on the prompt. And then you can make it, I think it's a two, uh, semicolon, and then you give it a path. So path to a figure or path to an icon, etc. And then you also give it the command to run. So this is going to be, for example, Firefox on the terminal, for example. And this is how you would make like a custom entry. So for XLunch, that's pretty much it. I mean, uh, if you don't already have desktop environment installed, you may need to maybe get a, grab a hold of those icons that you need in order to install it. But uh, otherwise, again, it's very easy to set up. You just install it using uh, your regular package manager. And then once that is done, it essentially generates the application kind of files, uh, the application configuration that you need so that you can start using it as an application launcher right away. And otherwise, the configuration is very clear on how you define the inputs and the outputs in order to use it, for example, as a uh, script launcher or maybe as a menu system. So this should be more or less enough in order to get you guys to get your guys going with regards to this. So thank you very much, and uh, I'll see you next time.